Hey and welcome to this tutorial on how to use M calibration. My name is Jorgen Bergström and I'm from polymerfm.com. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can use M calibration to very quickly calibrate a viscoplastic material model to some experimental data that I have. So let's get started. Uh, first, I will show you the two experimental data files that I have. Here they are. I can gonna open them with a text editor. You see there are three columns, time, strain, and stress in these uh, files. I can close them. The next thing I will do is just actually open up M calibration here. So on my other screen, I clicked on the icon to start it. Here it is. And there are different ways to read in experimental data into M calibration. A very convenient way is to simply drag and drop it in. So see if I can do that. I'm going to put this window here. Let's see if I can minimize this. Here it is. And I'm going to take this file and drag it in. And then I double click on this one and it says engineering strain, engineering stress. That's the data that we have. Loading mode is uniaxial. Time stepping is to follow the same increments as in the experimental file. And the plot uh, style is red, experimental and predicted blue. I like to change that to make the both the experimental and the predicted curves blue, but I want the predicted to be dashed. And I'll save that. So that's my first file. I can do the same thing with the second file. I can take this, I can drag it right in. And there it is. I will change the color on this one. Uh, here it is, engineering stress strain. So it read in properly. Uh, uniaxial time stepping is the same. I will make this blue and dashed. So here are my two experimental files. The next thing I will do is I will change the names of these test cases. So I'll, in this portion here, I can specify what the name is of, of the test. Uh, I like to make it a little bit better than just tension data one and two. So I select both of them, I right click on it, and I say rename load cases based on type. And it automatically picks a better name, Unisal tension and the actual strain rate that it can find out, the software finds that out from the experimental data itself. The next thing I'd need to do here is to select the material model that I want to calibrate to these two experimental files. So I go down to the lower left bottom here and I say set material model. And you get a dialog box that has a wide range of different material models that you can calibrate to any data that you have. In this case, I'm just going to pick the PolyUMOD 3 network model, which is a good material model for uh, thermoplastic materials. I say OK. And here is my material model that I have calibrated. I will now specify the bulk modulus. You see that it is 408. The software picks this value because it thinks it's a good guess based on the, the shear modulus that it finds from the experimental data. But there's no guarantee that that's a good number. Um, what I will do is I will specify a different value or allow the software to find what it should be. So I will use the following technique. I open up a load case. I switch over to Poisson's ratio. So I will add the information what I want the Poisson's ratio of my calibrated material model should be. And I select 0 0.4 in this case, which is a good number for this material. Once I have it in here, I can then look at these parameters just to review them very quickly. There's the shear modulus. There are some other values here that they're perhaps not clear what they mean, but we don't need to worry so much about it. The software will take care of that. Um, now that we have information about the Poisson's ratio, we can allow the software to search for kappa, which is the bulk modulus. And the rest of the parameters look pretty good. I will take them as they are. And before we try to optimize this model, we will try to see what this current material model will behave like uh, under the conditions that are listed here. So I click on run once, and I get in dashed lines the predictions of the material model for these two uh, load cases. You can see that the predicted dashed lines are a little bit too high. The modulus are actually pretty good, but the yield stress values are a little bit too high. This is something that we can uh, have the software fix for us. We don't need to worry about it, but it's good to see what it looks like before we start the actual optimization of the parameters. The other thing to point out, as you see in the table here, some of the parameters are black and some of them are red. The red values have a checkbox in this right column called optimize. 
That means that the software will try to find these values based on the experimental data. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, the default setting of what's optimized and what's not is a good selection. And it's uh, software picks that based on the experimental data that's available. So we'll, we can go with this. We'll save this as it is. Uh, I'm now going to start the calibration itself. I'm going to switch over to um, Quick Automatic, which is uh, something I use for demonstration purposes typically. Otherwise, I use the extensive automatic. The Quick Automatic method runs quickly, and it usually does a reasonably good job, but it, it, it sort of times out very quickly. So um, it's not something that I would use for real problems where I want to really get the best calibration possible. So with this, you can see that the software is trying to manipulate these parameters in order to better match the experimental data. It has started to reduce the yield stress values and it matches those a little bit better. Um, the NMAD fitness that I listed here is the error in percent. So initially, before we started the calibration, we had about 25% error. We down now to a 13% error. And we have done 70 functional evaluations and we have tried to fix this problem, solve this problem for about 40 seconds at this point. Um, the longer we wait, the better this gets. And at some point it will time out. But for our little demonstration here, uh, I think it's good enough. What we see, we see a reasonably good fit. Certainly not the best that it can be, but it's, it's a good enough for our demonstration. So I will stop this by clicking Stop Calibration. And that's really all steps um, uh, in a min minimum sense of what you need to do to calibrate the material model using M calibration. Um, there are a few other things that could be uh, quite interesting to see. The first one is how do you export this material model now to a finite element program? Typically, you would need to use this in Abacus ANSYS or some other FE solver. So the way you do that is to click on Export Model. And you can see a selection of formats that you can export this to. And I will have a separate tutorial for how to do this, but for now it's going to pick an Abacus IMP file. And here are the units that I want to export them to. I save, save it here and it will create a file for me. And here's my file. So if I double click on this one, you can see that this is now the parameters that you can put into your Abacus IMP file if you want to use this. And the technique for other FE solvers will be very much the same. So with that, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you have any questions.